It is great to welcome everyone here to East Providence today. I'm proud to be joined by our Lieutenant Governor, Sabina Matos, and my great colleagues, Winsocket Mayor Lisa Boldelli Hunt, North Providence Mayor Charlie Lombardi, Johnston Mayor Joe Palacino, Lincoln Town Administrator Phil Gould, Bristol Town Administrator Steve Contente, Cranston Mayor Ken Hopkins, former Central Falls Mayor James Diossa was here earlier, but he had to go to another appointment, and our colleague Pawtucket Mayor Don Grebian would have also joined us today, but he had a prior commitment. I'd like to thank our hosts, the team here at IGIS, which employs 328 workers here in the city of East Providence. Special thanks goes out to IGIS CEO Arthur Poplinski and Operations Manager, Manager Jerry Fornia and HR Director Ann Harley. I'd like to take a moment and a few minutes to introduce my good friend and Governor Dan McKee. Governor McKee took office less than a year ago. He stepped in at a tough moment for our state. We were into the pandemic a year, with children learning virtually, businesses struggling to stay open, and our state moving at a glacial pace to get vaccines out. In a short period of time, Governor McKee demonstrated strong leadership to put us on the right track and get, us, get our state moving again in the right direction. That is why I am supporting Dan McKee for governor in 2022. He is dedicated to creating jobs across our state. He will work to put more money in Rhode, Island's, in Rhode Island's paychecks and in their pockets. He's proven that he knows how to keep our economy moving. There are so many reasons why I support Governor McKee, but I want to highlight just three of them. One, Governor McKee ran a small family business and knows what it means to support small businesses. More than 50% of our workforce is employed at a small business. I had the opportunity to bring Governor McKee on a walking tour of Taunton Avenue and visit with our East Province businesses. We visited with managers, employees, and employers of restaurants, flower shops, and more. In the middle of the pandemic, Governor McKee went and met with these people at their doorsteps to learn more about what kind of help they needed and how we could provide better support and resources for them. Governor McKee took the time to really connect with these small mom and pop shops. And I have seen him do so and do the same across all 39 cities and towns. That is why, as one of his first moves as governor, he rolled out the Small Business Relief Grant Program delivering $18 million in grants to more than 3,700 businesses. And he has worked with our business community every day to find responsible, safe ways to keep us moving forward. These businesses are the backbone of our state economy, and, Do and Governor Dan McKee understands that. Two, Governor McKee spent a decade as a mayor and knows our 39 cities and towns better than anyone. That is why many of our municipal leaders are standing here today in support of Governor McKee. When you are a mayor, you bring a different approach. It is hands-on, and you really focus on getting the details right. He put that mayoral experience that he had to work from the moment he took office. Immediately, I saw a change in the state's response. It is important to remember that three weeks before he took office, Harvard gave Rhode Island an F for vaccine rollout. And it was up to him to change that. He put the, all of us here, the municipal leaders, and many of the others that are not here today, to work directly with the Rhode Island Department of Health to set up vaccine clinics and get shots in the arms. And it's thanks to the Governor McKee that we made the progress that we made in, since he took office. Three, and most importantly, Governor McKee has delivered proven leadership just when our state has needed it most, and he has a vision for our future. He jumped into his role and has delivered for Rhode Island families. Under the governor's leadership, we have recovered more than 80,000 jobs lost during the pandemic. IGIS, our host today, is a success story for Rhode Island. IGIS added 100 
and eight employees during the pandemic and experienced a 33% growth in 2021. Not only that, the company has plans to build the most energy efficient building right here in East Providence in the state of Rhode Island. We are now ranked number one in the Northeast and number nine among all 50 states on Moody's Back to Normal Index. Governor McKee is overseeing a $300 million budget surplus, and he moved quickly to raise the minimum wage. The state has $1 billion to invest from the American Rescue Plan Axe Fund and another $2 billion from President Biden's infrastructure bill. Governor McKee knows we have to get that right because this is a once-in-a-generation investment in Rhode Island. He has the best vision for how to spend it, building more affordable housing, expanding Medicaid coverage, investing in school infrastructure, cutting taxes for our small businesses, and making critical investment in clean energy. Right here in East Providence, the governor put $35 million into his budget to revitalize the South Key Marine Terminal. It is a visionary move that will jumpstart offshore wind construction and create hundreds of high-paying jobs, green jobs for our state. Governor McKee is a proven leader with the right mix of experience to lead Rhode Island's rebound. I'm going to do everything in my power to help him win a four-year term.